guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys, thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. If you guys have a Mazda vehicle and you're trying guys to find out how to bleed the cooling system, stay with us and we'll show you how to do that. We will demonstrate on a, a CX-7 guys, but many Mazdas will use that design, Mazda 3, 6, Mazda 2 I think, Mazda 5, CX-7 and CX-9. Now, you always have to check your service manual to make sure that your model does not have any specific uh, procedure, but we'll show you guys what we use at the shop. It works on that CX-7 and as I said, it should work on other, on other models as well. But always consult your manual. Now, stay with us guys, we'll show you what needs to be done. In addition, we'll have more than 200 videos on this car and every car we get at the shop because our mission is to save you guys as much money as we can. So please guys, subscribe to the channel in return, like the video and drop a comment below. So, let's start on it now. So you need to guys find your radiator, okay, open the cap, sometimes you have a radiator cap, sometimes you have an overflow bottle on the side somewhere with the cap. So we'll need to fill it up slowly with a Mazda approved coolant guys. Okay, we have that container here uh, that we already pre-mixed everything in it, the container is not the original Mazda coolant, okay, but you can check guys, okay. You can check uh, in the description of the video below guys where we get uh, that original Mazda coolant from. So, we'll just slowly start adding some coolant. Always use gloves guys. Don't ask why we don't use any. And we're going to fill it up guys until the radiator is full. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Especially when you have a sideways cap like we do here. You have to use a smaller funnel. Otherwise you're going to spill coolant everywhere and if you do, always clean your garage or if you're doing it outside because if animals Okay, if animals uh, drink that, they're going to die guys. This is extremely poisonous for you, for animals, for any living creature. So, just slowly adding until the radiator is full and then we'll guys continue with the next step. So the first gallon is empty guys, we're going to pre-mix some. Uh, you can buy the mixed formula or the pre-mixed, all that will be listed in the description of the video below for your Mazda vehicle. So we're going to mix a little bit more and we'll continue. Okay, so we'll keep adding, just slowly now because it takes it even slower. Okay, it's almost getting to the point that it's getting full. So we'll just uh, make sure that it's all the way full and we'll continue. So we'll just add until the radiator is full. We will remove the funnel so we can show you guys a little bit better now. Okay, you can see how it's almost getting full. You have to be careful towards the end because it's here really easy to spill and overflow. We have the video guys how to drain the coolant and all that stuff on a car so check it out how to flush your radiators, heater cores. Why it's taking it slow because it's going to the cylinder head now, it's going in the heater core. And some passages are very small, some hoses are very small, it goes even in the, in the throttle body in most cases. Okay, and you can see, okay, let me just try a little bit more, but I think, I think we are full, guys. Okay, perfect, this is full now. If you have an overflow bottle on your Mazda vehicle, you need to add to the maximum mark on yours. I'll show you where ours is in just a second. Okay, this is low, I can still go more. There is minimum and maximum mark usually, and it should be checked when the coolant and the engine is cold. Okay, we're right guys, at the full mark now. Okay, on ours is right here, full and low. So, Perfect guys, we're ready with that step, we're going to close the radiator cap, we're going to close the uh, overflow bottle and we'll continue with the next step and show you what needs to be done. 
next guys what we'll be doing okay we're going to uh, leave the cap open even though it's uh, it's full we will leave it open but don't do that with uh, with hot engine i'm going to go ahead okay start the car now okay let us show you start the car and let it idle okay but you have to do that only if the engine is cold because otherwise if you open okay if you open the cap it's going to uh, uh it's going to burn you spray hot coolant that can kill you guys burn you get your eyes all that stuff set the heater on high all the way on high okay so that way uh, the coolant will go through the heater core as well and while it's idling we are going to add a little bit more now coolant Okay, you can see, oh, it took more, perfect. So, we can go ahead and close it now. Okay, great. Now guys, what I'm going to do inside, we will let the car warm up a little bit. Why? Because, um, okay, uh, it's very important to warm up the oil a little bit and I'm going to connect the basic OBD reader you can find this one listed in the description of the video below. Okay, the car is extremely dirty because we just finished working on it and we haven't even got to detailing it yet. Okay, and while, okay, while it's idling, keep eye on your temperature gauge. Okay, make sure that doesn't overheat. We're going to select diagnose, we'll wait for it, okay? And that way we can precisely watch the temperature of the coolant. No engine lights or anything like that. We'll go to data stream so that way we can see live data. View all items. And one of the first ones will be the coolant. Okay, it's going to take just a little bit of time to read all that. And Engine coolant temperature 125 degrees guys, 127. So I'm going to just gently rev it up down to about 2500 RPMs. You want to let it uh, warm up until it reaches about 170, 80 degrees. That way the oil will be warm. So if you don't have the scanner to about the middle of the temperature gauge, uh, you have to start feeling, okay, some, some, um, actually heat coming out of the vents okay some heat coming out of the vents it's, it's getting to 131 so we're going to go ahead climb it to about 1 170 180 and uh, we'll continue guys again okay guys so you can see we're climbing towards the middle we're almost there what some people guys do now okay some manuals they say you have to keep the car at 5000 rpms for about five minutes five minutes flat now, first, I think this is ridiculously high. I will not go that high. Mass than Ford, they share many components together and these uh, many engines are developed by Ford, even the one in this one. And uh, Ford lists another procedure and I'll explain the difference. But before we continue, guys, you want to make sure that your engine oil is clean. You have engine oil between the minimum and the full mark, okay? Because especially if it's a turbo car, you want to make sure until the engine oil is warm. Engine is warm so you can continue revving the engine up. So you don't cause any damage to the turbo, to the engine itself. Even if it's a non-turbo engine. So, instead of going to about, okay, as I said, some manuals say 5,000 RPMs for 5 minutes. You have to hold that, then you have to let the car idle for about 30 seconds to 1 minute and repeat that 4 times. Now, what I usually do, okay, you can see we reach the middle there. What I'm going to do, we're at about 161 degrees, so that's close to 170, it's warm. I even feel some heat coming from the heater core, so that's good. I'm going to rev it up. Okay, to about 3500 RPMs. And you want to keep it flat there, guys. Okay, flat. Why? Because when you keep that constant flow, the pump, water pump, will be going really fast and it will have a constant flow of coolant through the engine passages. And that constant flow, guys, it's going to pick small pocket air, uh, air pockets and stuff like that so we can get them out. And in the meantime, guys, keep eye on the temperature gauge. Any lights, if they come up, turn the car off. 
Never ever open the coolant to check the, the radiator to check the coolant level because it will be super hot. If it starts overheating, stop revving it up, turn it off. So we're at about 172 degrees now. Okay, and I'm going to do that. Okay, I don't want to waste your time. We're going to do that for about. Uh, we'll do it for about five minutes. Okay, and then we'll continue. After that, you let off. You let it idle about 30 seconds to one minute, guys. And you're going to repeat that same thing three more times. So four times times five minutes. Okay, revving it up at constant flow. I would probably go go between 3,000 and 3,500 RPMs because 5,000 sounds ridiculously high for me, guys. Okay, you can try it. I've done it in the past at five. I didn't cause any damage to the engine, but I just feel bad for the engine revving it so high up for such a long time without any load. So, after you do that, keep eye on your temperature. Okay, make sure the thermostat is going to open. We're at 190 now, and uh, the thermostat will open soon. Okay, also uh, make sure that your uh, radiator fan will kick in if the coolant gets hot. Otherwise, if you have a problem with the fan, you can overheat the car. And uh, what do you do next, guys? Okay, let the car stay for at least one night, at least 12 hours. Okay, and next morning, when everything is super cold, engine coolant, everything should be super cold, you're going to check your level. Okay, you're going to check your level on the overflow bottle. Okay, and I'll recommend to check your coolant level in the radiator, but when the engine is super cold. So, this is it guys, pretty much. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos and see you guys next time.